welcome! The reason I'm recording this video today is because I wanted to show you the benefit of having parallel compute power when training and designing and using deep neural networks, and why when you are using AI or doing AI development, you need the sort of extremely powerful parallel processing power which these sorts of multi-core CPUs and GPUs provide. Now in this video I will be talking about the differences in terms of benchmarks of performance of 1 core, 8 core, 20 core and 32 core CPUs to show you a little bit behind the scenes of how parallel processing works, its benefits, uh, and of course what it allows you to achieve in terms of deep neural networks, their training and performance. So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tamay Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over how you can do random number generation on a CPU in Python in a massively parallel manner. The way this will work is, of course, we will be generating millions of random numbers uh, in a variety of different ways. Let me explain. But to start off, let me tell you a little bit about what's happening today. First of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the task that I want to accomplish today. Now, in essence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Python script which can generate any amount of random numbers. Say that you want uh, 5 million random numbers. But this Python script will generate 5 million random numbers in three different ways. First of all, this Python script will just try doing them one by one, okay, on the CPU. Uh, it will one by one generate these random numbers using one core. Uh, and so, of course, the random number generator uh, will use one core of the CPU. However, uh, since of course most Macs have four core CPUs, meaning eight threads because of hyper-threading, uh, what, what I'm also going to do uh, is make the Python script uh, also do this in a slightly parallel way, meaning it'll actually generate eight things, that way it'll generate eight random numbers at once. And so it'll do this in an eight core way. Uh, meaning eight processes will be launched at the same time, meaning that it will do eight at the, at the same time. So it'll do uh, five, it'll, it'll create five million random numbers for the time of only five million divided by eight uh, individual random number creations, plus some because there's some delay, you know, joining the results. Uh, however, there is something else. Five million random numbers still isn't really a lot because of, you know, CPUs are really, really fast and really, really precise. Uh, and so, doing these, you know, eight at a time is very, very fast for five million. However, when you start scaling up, say, 50 million, right as you get to 50 million, uh, the CPU starts struggling a little bit. And when you get to 100 million, it really starts uh, heavily breathing. Uh, and so it starts taking around, you know, 40 -ish seconds for the eight core to generate 100 million random numbers. However, there's more. Now, I'm going to run a different version of the Python script on a different machine entirely. And this is where a service provider called DigitalOcean comes in. I've wanted to create a video about this for quite a, quite a while, and this is the perfect opportunity to. DigitalOcean is a great cloud service provider that offer bare metal servers online, uh, and that you can use, of course, for your servers, for your applications, whatever it may be, to actually do development on things like Linux and BSD environments. Uh, and so what I've gone ahead and done uh, is I created a DigitalOcean droplet, or you know, uh, these bare, I created a bare metal server. Uh, and so what I did is I used their high uh, high processor uh, sort of environment, which has 20 cores of bare metal CPU power. And what I was able to do is actually create another version of the Python script that used the same code as the eight core version, but I was able to scale it up to 20 cores. And as you can imagine, when we're generating 100 million random numbers, this becomes a lot easier. We get all the way from 40-something seconds to exactly 30 seconds for 100 million random numbers. Uh, and so as you can see, this is absolutely great how you're able to deploy a cloud bare metal server and instantly run these sorts of applications on that server. 
Now the reason I wanted to create this video today, and the reason that I've always wanted to create this video, is because I want to show you a little bit of the highlights of parallel processing. Now this is actually a very small example. However, I'm actually, I mean relatively a small example. However, I will be releasing a much bigger and fuller example uh, that's much more interesting in a little while as well. But for now, I'm going to get over to the code part where I'll show you how you can actually implement this entire system and run these benchmarks yourself uh, for 5 million, 50 million, and 100 million random numbers. Uh, and of course, uh, again, since you've got more cores, the more random numbers you're generating, the greater benefit you get from those extra cores. It's a generally really interesting concept, and I cannot wait to share it with you. All right, now let's get over to the coding part where I will show you how you can code in this entire system. Let's get to it. All right, so welcome back to the Mac part. And now let's take a look at how you can actually implement uh, this benchmarking system and take a look at how multiprocessing can be used uh, to speed up operations that need to be done so many times. Uh, now, if I actually go over here to my terminal, as you can see, I've actually gone ahead and created something called a digital ocean uh, droplet. And of course, these droplets allow you to create, uh, are basically these uh, cloud servers uh, that allow you, if I just open up DigitalOcean here, uh, allow you to uh, host servers in the cloud so you can do development on them. And of course they have lots of different types of droplets. Uh, for example, this one right here that I've created is a high CPU instance, uh, meaning that you can actually uh, create instances with more CPUs, more RAM, whatever really fits your needs, and of course uh, on, on actual hardware, on bare metal. Uh, but what I've gone ahead and done for now is chosen Debian 8.864-bit, 8 uh, uh, and of course I've gone over to high CPU and chosen this uh, option right here. Uh, and so as you can see, uh, now they do also provide 20 core instances and the standard instances, uh, which are easier to get. So I've also benchmarked uh, the 20 CPU instances uh, and the 32 uh, CPU instances. Uh, see, the 48 CPU instance is not available yet, but once it is out, I will benchmark that and put the results in the description as well. Alright, so those are the sizes available to you for your droplets. Of course, this is the highest one that you can actually currently choose, and that's the one that I've gone ahead and used for the benchmark. Now I'm actually going to go right back over to my terminal, and as you can see, this is what looks what it looks like when I SSH into my droplet. I can actually go ahead uh, and run nano on this Python script that will allow us to run this benchmark, uh, and this is what it looks like. Uh, as you can see, it's a very simple Python multiprocessing script, and what it does is it's able to generate a bunch of random numbers in parallel, uh, and it'll find the optimal number of processes to run at a specific time uh, using the multiprocessing.pool function. And so what happens is using this script, all I need to do is run the time command. And if you don't know what the time command is, it's a bash command that allows you to time the execution of a script. So let's just say you wanted to time the execution of an echo script. You could do this, and as you can see, it was, it was so quick that it wasn't able to report the time. But if we were to do something a little bit more long running, uh, for example, Python grandpar, and if we were to ask it to generate 50 million numbers, or like so, so that I've just entered 50 million and the Python script shouldn't take over, you know, around 11 seconds because of course we're doing this in a massively parallel way. And so even though there are 50 million happening, it's really 50 million divided by 32. You're doing it for that time of this plus some uh, on a single core because of course the results have to be stitched back together and memory management, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, however, again, this is around the time that it should be taking. Uh, and as you can see, it was able to give us the result uh, in around 10.025 seconds. It also gives you the number of minutes that the system took to uh, process this command. And so that is how I actually run these benchmarks and manually get all these results and, and, and log them out. Uh, but once you've actually gone ahead and, and actually gotten these results, I'm going to show you the results. Now I've actually created this little spreadsheet here uh, indicating the sort of um, the, the benchmarks that, I, that I've uh, created. And there are these graphs here as well. And I'll explain the graphs in just a minute. But first we'll take a look at the results. 
Now, as you can see, for 5 million, uh, of course, the CPU is very, very quick at this, because the thing is, each operation that the CPU does is very, very fast, uh, and of course, it's doing only around 5 million, which for the CPU is not a lot. It might seem like it, uh, but again, it's not a lot for the CPU. Uh, so for one core, you're looking at around 6 seconds, which still actually is quite a bit, but for 8 cores, you're immediately at around 2 seconds, which is, which is, uh, slow, which is fast enough. Uh, to the point that I did not need to benchmark the 20 and 32 core CPUs. However, when you get to 50 million, uh, the results are a little bit different. Now, with one core, meaning that you're generating random numbers one by one, you're spending around a minute, or more specifically around 57 seconds, generating those random numbers. However, with eight cores, look at this, you're getting down to just 20 seconds. And then, with 20 cores, you're shaving off an extra second. You're getting down to around 18 seconds. And then with 32, you're shaving off another 8 seconds, and you're getting to around 10.93. So as you can see, what's happening here is it's proving how multiprocessing is able to work. But, I mean, you probably guessed this, this doesn't require me to create a video about it. Uh, because, I mean, of course, if you do many things at the same time, it'll be much quicker. Why did I create this video? Well, that's because I wanted to show you a little bit of an interesting feature of multiprocessing. Because take a look at this. What's happening over time is one core is in increasing to the point where I've just, you know, just made this not applicable. I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, benchmarking um, one core after 100 million because it's just taking way too long. It's took around two minutes to calculate 100 million random numbers. However, look at this. Eight cores took 40 seconds, 20 cores took 31, and 32 cores took 18 seconds. Now, what does this mean? Well, I think in order to explain this to you better, take a look at these charts. As you can see, over time, the gap or the uh, the amount of improvement that the 32 core provides over 20 core, or that 20 core provides over 8 core, or that 8 core provides over 1 core, is increasing. And the reason that is, is because you're doing more operations in parallel. And you benefit from more cores when you're doing more things in parallel. And so, uh, what happens is the strength of the CPU, for say, say for example, uh, 32 cores, really starts to shine in the 700 million example. Because over time, what's happening is you're really using that high parallelism that the 32 core CPU provides, you're using it to the point uh, that it's much, much more powerful than 20 core. And 20 core itself is actually much, much more powerful than what 8 core is providing. As you can see, it's almost, uh, you know, ha the 20 core does it in twice the speed almost of 8 core here uh, and 32 core does it in even even faster than that uh, and as you can see what happens eventually is once you start stacking up operation over operation the 32 core doesn't get faster over time and so what's happening is it's getting slower at a slower rate but 20 core is getting slower at a slightly faster rate than the 32 core. And so when you want to scale up massively parallel operations, the more cores you have, the better it is for your system. In fact, here is a chart explaining that very concept. Uh, now, as you can see, this blue line here represents the speed that the 8-core CPU takes along uh, all, the, the, all the different benchmarks that I run. So as you can see, for example, 50 million, uh, there's not very much variation between the amount of time that 8-core, 20-core, and 32-core CPUs take. However, when you scale, start to scale up, you can see that the distance between them increases, and the speed at which the distance between them increases also increases over time. So what you can see happens over here is towards the end with 800 million, uh, you're seeing that there's a huge gap between 8 core and 20 core, and then of course a big gap between uh, 20 core and 32 core. Uh, and of course, if we were to continue and do this for say 900 million, a billion, etc., etc., uh, this these gaps would just get bigger and bigger, and the rate at which these gaps get bigger would also increase. Now, of course, this was just a very, very quick introduction video to multiprocessing in Python and how it can be used with things like DigitalOcean servers. However, what I am going to do is release a much more full and better example of multiprocessing in just a few days uh, when I explain to you exactly how you can use multiprocessing in a much more practical example using these types of servers.
I cannot wait until that video, but that's going to be all for this video today. I really do hope you learn from this and you're able to learn a little bit about how uh, exactly these systems work uh, and how multiprocessing can be used uh, in your applications. Of course, I will be releasing a much fuller and more in-depth tutorial very soon. Uh, and technically, of course, I'm also using 32 cores here. Uh, and that will be out soon. So thank you very much for joining me today. I really do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do make sure to leave a like down below. Uh, and of course, share the video if you believe this could help anybody else you know, like your friends or family. Uh, and of course, though, if you have any more questions or suggestions or even feedback, please do leave it down in the comment section below. You can email it to me at tajimani at gmail.com or tweet, to, tweet it to me at tajimani. Of course, though, if you really do like my content and you want to see more of it, please do consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. And of course, turning on notifications uh, if you'd like to be notified whenever I release new content, as again, it really does help out. Uh, again, thank you very much for joining me today. That's going to be all for this video. Uh, second part is coming out soon, and all the source code and benchmarks will be available in the description, and a link to this Google Sheet will be available as well. Thank you very much for joining me today. Goodbye.